Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers fleeing from officers, identifying to an officer, and motorized bicycles, and is brought to us by the Doc Tours channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Kami Kodo. Kami Kodo makes extremely sharp, durable kitchen knives using techniques that have been honed and perfected by generations of knife smiths and the finest steel sourced directly from Japan. Kamikoto taps into more than 800 years of traditional techniques from Honshu, Japan to create distinctively sharp single bevel knives with a practical and elegant design. Kamikoto's expert bladesmiths forge and shape raw Japanese steel into hardy blades, polishing and sharpening them to an excruciatingly fine edge. And each knife goes through a rigorous 19-step process that takes several years from start to finish to complete. Kamikoto knives are individually inspected to ensure supreme quality. And that's why they're used by Michelin star chefs all over the world. Every knife has a subtle but smooth satin finish, and each set comes in a beautiful heavy-duty ash wood box which is perfect for gifting to your special someone. A set of Kamikoto knives will improve anyone's cooking or kitchen experience. And right now, Kamikoto has a huge sale going on. Kamikoto is offering members of the ATA community an extra $50 off of any purchase when you use code AUDITTHEAUDIT or click on the link in the description below. A set of Kamikoto knives has a lifetime guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to lose. Click on the link now before it's too late. Thanks again to Kamikoto for sponsoring this episode. On September 29th, 2019, Corey Mountain resident Michael Franchek was involved in a verbal dispute with a neighbor about his 15-year-old son, Jack Franchek, riding a motorized bicycle around their neighborhood. Officers from the Park City Police Department in Park City, Utah, arrive on the scene and question the neighbor and other independent witnesses, one of which tells the officers that she may have seen a gun in Mr. Franchek's waistband. The officers then locate Mr. Franchek's home and attempt to make contact with him. Can I help you? Hello, are you uh, Michael? Hi, uh, can I help you with something? Yeah, uh, we're here about a... And your name? Uh, Officer Rodriguez. Uh, first name? Jim. Jim, how are you Jim? Can, can and I... your name? Please? So. Sorry, badge number? What's that? Badge number okay. please? Okay. Let, let's go ahead and talk about the incident that you had out here a few minutes I ago. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Just step down here for me. No, thanks. Yeah, no, no. Mr. Franchek attempts to run inside and close the door before the officers can grab him, but the officers force their way inside and restrain Mr. Franchek. In the 1976 Supreme Court case of United States versus Santana, the court held that officers may chase a suspect into their home without a warrant if they are in hot pursuit. In the case, the court declared that the front porch of a home is considered public because no reasonable expectation of privacy exists there, and that officers initiating a detainment on the front porch of a dwelling are merely performing a court-approved function. Because the officers had an independent witness state that Mr. Franchek had a firearm, his sudden jolt back inside his home engaged the officers in hot pursuit, allowing them to enter Mr. Franchek's home without a warrant. In the Santana case, the court noted that hot pursuit need not be an extended hue and cry in and about the public streets. And whether a pursuit ends almost as soon as it begins does not render it any the less a hot pursuit sufficient to justify the warrantless entry into a suspect's house. Combined with with the earlier report of a gun, Mr. Franchek's sudden retreat prompted the officers to react to what they perceived as a potential threat and attempt to restrain Mr. Franchek. It is likely that a court would consider the officers' warrantless entry into Mr. Franchek's home valid because the officers had reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Franchek based on the reports of the independent witnesses. Utah Criminal Code 76-8-305.5 bans fleeing from or attempting to elude a peace officer who has issued a verbal or visual command to stop. Once Mr. Franchek exited his home and entered into what the court considers public domain, the officers were within their authority to detain and investigate him. As Mr. Franchek turns to run, the officers lawfully order him to stop, but he ignores their commands and initiates a hot pursuit. As the officers follow Mr. Franchek inside, a small scuffle forms, and Mr. Franchek's son Jack comes downstairs to film the interaction. No. Don't take his phone! Don't, Don't take his phone! Back. Chill. I'm good. I'm good. I've chilled the whole time. I haven't done anything. Relax. I haven't resisted. Officer, I'm trying to talk to you. I am Stay. behind my back. Just, just, just. This is unbelievable. No, I know. This is they unbelievable. They walked in the house without a search warrant. This is unbelievable. Okay. It's all on film. Get my camera. It's on my phone, too. It's on now. my phone. He, the whole thing is on film. 
Okay. The whole thing is on phone. Jack, right. follow me and record. Right this way. Follow me and record. Okay. Okay. Give us space. I'm not. Good. Give us space. Okay. No, Jack, What's your space? Things. What's your space? Jack, Jack, record the whole thing. Oh, you're, you're recording. Give us space. Does this look like enough space? I didn't resist. I know. I didn't do it. You know. Look, See, look. he acknowledged that look. I didn't resist, Jack. Yeah, I have it on video. I didn't resist. But we asked you to stop, right? I did. I didn't do anything yeah. against your instructions. You came. This yeah. guy came into my house without a warrant, without any probable yeah. cause. Let me just talk for a second. I said I don't know anything, and he tackled me in my and house. He told you to stop, right? He did not say anything of the sort. Officer, it's I all heard video. the whole thing, it's and it's on video. video so. It's all on video. It is. It's all on video. It is. Dude, he, that guy is out of control. Okay. I'm fine. Officer, 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 I want him nowhere near me. Yes, yeah. that guy is crazy. Yeah. Oh, no. What's your name? Yeah, I do not need to give you that. Yeah, yeah you do. Jack, For what no, reason? Jack, don't do because it. You're I know. In this. No, I'm, I'm involved with this. Yes, but this guy yeah. threatened me and called the cops on you. And what's your what's your badge number? What's your name? What's your badge number? Badge Jack, number. That says name. Three K twelve. Okay. Now what's your name? I'm not making any statements. You're not making any statements? Nope. Okay, I have the right to identify you. You understand okay. that, right? Then you can search up my face and you can search up my record. Utah Criminal Code 76-8-305 states that recording the actions of a law enforcement officer with a camera, mobile phone, or other photographic device while the officer is performing official duties in plain view does not by itself constitute interference with the officer, willful resistance, disorderly conduct, or obstruction of justice. The officer does not have have the authority to identify Jack simply because he was recording the interaction. But Jack was involved in the prior altercation that the officers are investigating, which would grant the officers reasonable suspicion to detain and identify him. There was also a complaint that Jack was riding his bike on the road illegally, which we will get to in a moment. Okay. Okay. Well, you're going to sit tight for a minute. You're okay. not going anywhere. I can go in my house no, if I no, want. No, Am can't. I detained? You're detained. For what reason? For what? That guy threatening to... me? Why isn't that guy going to jail? That guy threatened to beat me in his so that's, why aren't you guys arresting him? That's not the information why are you I got. Yeah, he can just lie. So you were the one driving up and down the street on the motorcycle? Uh, I was on my gas bicycle. Okay, that's a gas-powered vehicle. You have to have a driver's license. Um, no, you don't. Yes, you do. Not when it's 50cc and you have a permit for it. It is difficult to speculate on the legality of the bike that Jack was riding because it is not shown at any point in the original video. What the video does tell us about the bike is that it is a gas-powered motorized bicycle. It is 50 cubic centimeters, and Jack has some kind of permit to ride it. Although the bike is never shown, it is safe to assume that Jack is referring to the motorized bicycle kits that are routinely sold online. The kits come with a small engine, usually around 50 cc, that attaches to most standard size bicycles. The codes and ordinances regarding the legal legality of these kits and other motorized bicycles vary from state to state. Utah Traffic Code Section 41-6A defines a moped as a motor-driven cycle with pedals that permit propulsion by human power, and a motor which produces not more than two brake horsepower and is not capable of propelling the cycle at a speed in excess of 30 miles per hour on level ground. If a moped produces more than two brake horsepower, then it is classified as a motor-driven cycle and subject to more strenuous restrictions. Most 50cc motorized bicycle kits claim to produce between 1.5 and 3 horsepower and reach a maximum speed of 20 to 25 miles per hour. Whether or not Jack's bike would be considered a moped or a motor-driven cycle is questionable, but Utah Traffic Code 53-3-202 states that a person must be licensed to operate any motor vehicle in the state of Utah, and Utah Traffic Code 41-6A-102 defines a motor vehicle as a vehicle which is self-propelled, with exceptions for a motor-assisted scooter and an electrical personal assistive mobility device. Under UTC 53-3-202, Jack would require a driver's license to ride his bike on the road, and a driver's permit would not have served as proper documentation for doing so. Did they threaten to, like, beat... Did he threaten to yes. beat us up or anything? Yes. Yeah. Well, what did he... What, what did he goes, say? he goes, that bike is illegal. I said, no, it's not. It's a 50cc bicycle, and I have a permit for it. Okay. And he said, get out of the way. He was on his little road bike. He said, get out of the way or I'm going to beat your ass. So I don't, if you guys want to believe him, and we have two witnesses, he has zero. Okay, hold, calm down. Just calm down, no. calm down. No, I'm pissed off because you guys just came in our house. Okay. But we tried to come here to ask a question and figure out what was going on because what we got told is a gun was involved in this incident. So we're no going to take this a little no bit gun, No gun was involved, not okay. at all. We I don't know why you have to. We don't know that when we We don't here. know that. That's I know. What, that's what I'm saying. I so understand that. Come, yes, okay? I totally understand okay? that, but you can't just tackle him. Okay? But when he's told to stop, he has to stop. That's a lawful command by an officer. We can get physical. Okay. 
But you can't just come in the house without yes, a... We have to control this situation. Do you yes, have a search warrant? We don't need a search Yes, you do. Do you come want to go to school and learn the law? I already you know the law. No, you don't. Okay. We're okay. Not, we're not going to no, argue. Don't. Okay. Please don't so, talk to me, okay. so I'm get out of my way. Okay. This is my case. Oh, it's your case? So I'll talk to you as much as I want. Okay, well, I'm not going to respond to you. You don't have to respond okay. to me, but I can talk to you. Have a good day. And well, can you tell me why he tackled him into the house? Why he tackled no him into the house? No one got tackled. He was told to stop. I saw him with his arm behind his back and twisted all around okay, but that's not saying tackling. come outside that's not tackling, okay and i heard that something that yeah. there was big smacks and stuff like that so taser tag. yeah i know that's I said, a taser I'm not, I'm not, but, I know, but I, I, I'm, I'm still talking can you please not interrupt me um so i was i heard all this stuff and then all of a sudden you guys are in the house did he allow you guys to come in the house okay i'm not going to get into that with you okay because you because you know that you guys came in illegally because he was told to stop when he's outside and he once he flees from us and he's told to stop that is not obeying a lawful command by an officer. That's all we're going to get. We're done with it, okay? okay? After a challenging but relatively productive conversation with Officer Proctor, Jack is allowed to go free, and the officers leave the scene without incident. Mr. Franchek was booked into the Summit County Jail on a criminal complaint of failure to stop at the command of a law enforcement officer, disorderly conduct, refusal to comply with police order, and failure to disclose identity. Mr. Franchek filed a complaint against the arresting officer, Officer Rodriguez, and Park City Police Captain Phil Kirk released a statement confirming that an investigation was underway. On October 8, 2019, the Doc Tour posted an update video stating that the district attorney for Utah's 3rd District Court declined to prosecute any of the charges. It is possible that a lower court could decide to move forward on the charges, but given the DA's decision, it is unlikely. Mr. Franchek and Jack have set up a GoFundMe account to raise money for a civil suit against the Park City Police Department, which will be linked in the description below. Overall, the officers from the Park City Police Department get a B-, because although they lack the patience and professionalism to deal with a 15-year-old who had just witnessed his father being arrested, they were within their authority to enter into Mr. Franchek's house and detain him. Mr. Franchek never gave the officers the opportunity to hear his side of the story before frantically retreating back into his home and initiating a hot pursuit. Officer Rodriguez later notes, To be honest, all I would have done is talk to everybody, and it's a he says, she said, I would have written it up and said, here's the report. Nonetheless, the officers managed to detain Mr. Franchek without incident despite his subtle but combative resistance, and chose not to draw their service weapon even though Mr. Franchek had been reported to be armed. While the officers were lacking in professional discretion while interacting with Jack, they operated within the scope of their authority throughout the encounter. Mr. Franchek gets an F for choosing to flee back into his house instead of engaging with the officers, continuing to resist the officers once they had restrained him, and for escalating what could have been a minor disturbance into a physical altercation. If Mr. Franchek had approached the officers calmly and explained his side of the story, this interaction would have focused on the prior altercation rather than Mr. Franchek's erratic behavior and subsequent arrest. Mr. Franchek's choice to flee temporarily shifted the focus of the investigation, and his arrest essentially resolved the initial dispute. Mr. Franchek's actions were a catalyst to his arrest, and it is difficult to fault the officers for reacting accordingly. Jack Franchek gets a B plus, because although he may not be extremely well-versed in the law, it is clear that he has some understanding of basic legal principles and attempted to exercise his rights as much as possible. Jack's legal knowledge was somewhat of a hit and miss, but he certainly demonstrated a greater comprehension of constitutional rights than your average teenager. I commend Jack for attempting to exercise his constitutional rights and having the conviction to defy the officers. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to cover in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.